well, back in the team as well as Antonio Rudiger. We've seen the stats before when he starts versus when he doesn't. They can see far less goals when Rudiger is in this side. But we've just heard and been confirmed that he will be leaving this summer. How big of a loss is Rudiger to Chelsea and to Thomas Tuchel? It's massive. It's a massive loss for the team, for the club. The way that Tuchel plays, you know, he's like, Rudiger's been the one of the players that played the most, so obviously it adds the way he plays. He brings a bit of menace, a bit of uh, nastiness, yeah. uh, aggression, leadership. leadership. Yeah. He's one of the players, if he's playing for you, you love him. If he's yeah. not playing for you, 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 you know, the fans yeah. will be booing him. <laughs> but you need one of them in your team. He's, yeah. he's brilliant. I love watching him play. He's aggressive. He's on the front foot. You know, you watch him play against one of the best players in the world, Salah. He's on the front foot. Salah don't get to breathe. He's like, like taking control of the game and you need one of them players in your team. So it's going to be a huge loss. It's going to be a, a total reshape for Chelsea's defence for next year. And Thomas Tuchel has got his first headache, I think, as, as Chelsea manager. Quinton? We spoke, you know, you asked the question about United players. That's the kind of player you want on the front foot, aggressive. He's not, probably not the most technical player like Thiago, but his energy he brings to the team, his leadership in the team, he demands it. Just the way... Is it, against Salah. He didn't see Salah. That's the kind of player you want. Did you think there was a bit of a... Um lack of foresight from Chelsea's perspective because I was talking to Scott Minto he was really disappointed that they didn't put pen to paper in regards to Rudiger's situation um, and then obviously the sanctions happened which complicated matters you, you know what if obviously we're, we're not privy to the figures but you know obviously Chelsea's trying to do what's best for them and obviously we see some of the figures if, if maybe if, for example someone's off asking for 400 a week and they're saying we can't do that and sometimes negotiations just don't go and, and someone's like, well, we want more. And negotiations go on for a long... There's a lot of these, these modern-day contracts. There's so much detail in it. And if it doesn't go the right way, the next minute you look in, he can sign for someone else. So, you know, the disappointment, yeah, that he's gone. Could he have got it sorted? If you just say, here, have what you want, open checkbook, yeah. then maybe get sorted. But it's, it's not always that easy. Yeah, because, uh, again, Chelsea fans are going, oh, maybe they shouldn't have sold Tamori, shouldn't have sold Mark Gay, who's doing brilliant at Crystal yeah. Palace but sometimes it's one of those things where in hindsight yeah. I think you can certainly look at it but it's probably, hard to predict I mean those players you mentioned will probably do well in the future but at this current moment he's one of the best defenders in the world and you want him in, his, in your team so uh, it's a big loss with Chelsea